we're a startup technology company building autonomous robots and we're also a fully fledged farming operation here as well. So we grow wheat, barley, chickpeas, mung beans, sorghum and we run beef cattle as well. We're farmers and we actually wanted to change the way we farm. We got bigger, we got heavier and I think we were compromising the way we are doing things. So. Yeah, we started Swarm Farm to make things or make our machines a lot lighter. Our spray rigs, they started off being about seven tonne, I think we're up to 27 tonne. The erosion that those wheel tracks were making was huge. Jossie and Andrew Bate realised their traditional tractors were compacting their soil too much and in the face of increasing herbicide resistance, decided to make their own. And they really went for it. Weighing in at a slender 2,000 kilos with a 75 horsepower diesel engine, fifth generation bot November autonomously prowls paddocks on the hunt for invasive weeds. So November's got 13 different infrared cameras dotted along its back boom. And when it drives over weeds, it sees them and sprays some herbicide out of one of its individual 65 nozzles. With such precision, it can target those hard-to-kill weeds, and I'm told it can cut harmful herbicide usage by up to 98%, drastically reducing runoff. It can work day and night. It doesn't need a lunch break, and unlike me, it's not headed to the pub at the end of its shift. And what are these here? So at the front of the machine, we've got these, these cameras. So we've got three different lots of cameras, and they, uh, they're actually our obstacle detection. So what they do is build a ground plane out in front of the machine, um, and then any obstacles built up off that ground plane. So if there's something that comes up that's unexpected, it'll see it and stop for that. We try and feed the robot as much information as we can before it gets out there, but this is just uh, one of those safety measures that we've got in place. So I don't get run over? Yes, yeah, so you don't get run over. <laughs> Developing the software on farm is is, you know, puts us, puts us legs ahead, I suppose, in terms of the practical application of the technology. If we were in, in a city or somewhere where we're only able to go testing every three or four weeks, there's, there's already a delay in that feedback of that software. With the training ground right on their doorstep, it means developers in there can rapidly prototype and see their code in a real life scenario right out here in the field. For us, we can write something up and have it out on a robot within an hour out in the real world within a couple of hours after that working here at Bendy, it makes the process a lot faster. We actually want to get them out of the air-conditioned comfort and into the paddock. They can see how it's actually going to respond to the environment or whatever's in front of it, you know, washouts or... I think every paddock and every industry and every situation is so different. And the bots are customised for different industries. They've got them on macadamia nut farms, planting cotton, mowing grass on turf farms, and they're now turning their laser focus to orchards, literally. The technology we're working on uses computer vision and looks at each tree and says, this tree needs thinning today, and this tree doesn't need thinning. The end result of that will be better quality fruit, better yields, and potentially less chemicals used in the system. And eventually, they want to get rid of using chemicals altogether. If we're able to go through it and just pluck a weed out or, or chip a weed out, um, or microwave it, for example, there's, uh, yeah, there's lots of opportunities in that area. Sarah was just wanting to lock in a time. Or a husband and wife team. That's really normal in agriculture. A lot of people say, oh goodness, how is it to work together? It's what we do. You know, agriculture, you see it all the time. So it's no, nothing different for us. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, is it not a pain in the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes. <laughs>